one of my favorite movies of all time is It's a Wonderful Life. Now, they don't play It's a Wonderful Life throughout the year. It's a, I would consider that a Christmas movie. It definitely is a holiday movie. So you start seeing it around Thanksgiving and Christmas. But it's one of my favorite movies. You know, I love stories. I love hearing stories. I love good writing. I love good messages. And so this is a movie that definitely has good writing, a good message, and good acting. Now, the main character who the movie uh, focuses on is George Bailey, played by James Stewart. Now, there's different lessons we can learn by watching It's a Wonderful Life. Now, if you haven't seen the movie, man, I, I don't know where you've been. You know, I know I'm biased because that's one of my favorite movies, but it comes on every year. So I, I don't know what to tell you uh, if you hadn't seen it, but I won't spoil it for you. I'll just bring out six lessons uh, we can pull from it and you can take into the new year, year 2022. Here you go. Six lessons we can pull from. It's a wonderful life. Let's get into it. Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the men. Lesson number one. You have purpose. Now, George Bailey was on the brink of suicide before he was rescued uh, by an angel, his guardian angel, Clarence. Now, this is kind of a twist. I won't go too deep into it, but Clarence jumped into the lake and forced George to jump in and save him. But George was definitely about to commit suicide. And what it is, he got distracted. He got overwhelmed. He got distracted uh, with life. And he didn't realize how important and how purposeful his life is. And he was ready to give it up give it all up and commit suicide. He didn't realize how blessed he was, uh, the impact he had on others, on the lives of others. You know, uh, if he was, he, he wished he was never born. Now, you know, the Clarence, the, his guardian angel, uh, let him see how things would have turned out if he had not been born. And the fact of the matter is his, his brother uh, would have died in a, uh, in a lake accident. You know, he, uh, he had almost drowned. And George was able, as a young child, George was, George was able to dive in and save his brother. As a result, George left, uh, lost hearing in one of his ears, but he saved his brother's life. Uh, he, as when he was young, working at a pharmacy, he was able to catch a mistake the pharmacist, his boss made, you know, uh, the boss was gonna poison, inadvertently or accidentally poison a young boy. But George was there to save uh, the young boy and stop his boss from poisoning the young boy. Uh, so Clarence showed him, if you were not born, this boy would have died from this pharmacist's mistake. And uh, the pharmacist, you know, ended up doing 20 years in the penitentiary and became an alcoholic once he was released, all because George was never born. And he took him down, you know, a long road <clears throat> of revelation, showing him how things would have turned out if he had never been born. And so George had to realize, man, my life does have purpose. I do affect the lives of others also. And so we got to remember this. I know a lot of people around this time get depressed. Uh, we have a lot of family members and close ones that are no longer with us. And so this is a tough time for a lot of us. And so people get depressed, very depressed. And I understand. Um, but just know your life has purpose. You affect the lives of so many people, the li lives you may not even realize. Like George didn't realize. He affected so many lives. But I guarantee this world would be a lot different if you were not around and, and not for the better, for the worse. And you got to understand that it's bigger than you. So you got to get out of yourself and understand, man, this is just a moment. I affect lives in a positive manner. 
and I mean something. I do have purpose. I do affect this world in a positive way. Lesson number two, keeping up with the Joneses is for the lames. Now there's a, there's a scene in the movie where uh, George's young child says, the next door neighbors have a new car. And George is irritated and he kind of fusses and yells and says, uh, what's wrong with the car we have? It ain't good enough for you? Now, you know, the young child just saying the neighbors have a, a new car, but George is feeling pressure. He's, he feels like he's not doing enough. And uh, we got to be careful with that, man. We got to be careful with that. You should get all you can out of yourself and strive to be better strive to be your best self but with that you have to also balance that with maturity you have to be mature and understand not i can't overextend myself because trying to overextend yourself and trying to hang with the joneses and looking to your side to see what the neighbors are doing or what people on social media are doing can put you in a hole and can put you behind the eight ball and have you scrambling. And that's exactly what George ended up doing. He was behind the eight ball. He overextended himself. He was scrambling, became depressed. And now he wanted to give it all up, he wanted to kill himself. Man, live in your lane. Stay in your lane. Be the best you can be every day. Be the best version of you. Strive to be better. Strive to reach your goals. But stay in your lane. Don't look at what the neighbors are doing. The neighbors got a, a new car. Cool. Great for them. Stay in your lane. Hey, you may not have the same budget as your neighbors. Also, you don't even know if your neighbors can actually afford the car. Right? Stay in your lane. Don't look on the side. Lesson number three. Bad guys don't always get punished. Yes. Man, Mr. Potter, man, basically runs uh, the, the city, the town uh, George lives in. Uh, he's always running. And he controls a lot of the businesses. He controls the economy, the wealth. He's the richest man in, in town. Uh, I would say wicked, shrewd, uh, definitely powerful. And... Uh, he did some shady stuff. You know, I won't go into it and tell the movie. It's more of the movie for people who haven't seen it. But he did some shady stuff. Yeah, he, he doesn't play fair. Yeah, he doesn't play fair at all. And we kind of find out, even when Clarence the angel, the guardian angel, takes George down this road of revelation, showing him how life would be if he, would never, if he was never born, Mr. Potter became even more powerful. You know, he... he his life then changed for the worse. And so from the beginning of the movie to the end, this guy was powerful. He was wicked, corrupt, powerful. He was never punished. You know, I know in most movies, we're used to seeing the bad guy get punished. You know, they're, they're trying to show us a lesson. But this was different. The bad guy does not get punished. And so, hey, that's how life is sometimes, man. And, you know, I know, I know people like to yell karma, karma, karma. He's going to get his. She's going to get hers. Hey, man. Maybe they don't always get theirs in this life. But this bad guy did not get punished. So don't be focused on the bad guy getting punished. Don't be focused on people experiencing karma. Focus on you. Stay in your lane. Lesson number four. Don't hire someone just because they are your relative just because they are family. Now, man, George uh, had an uncle. This guy drank on the job, was incompetent. Uh, man, just didn't seem like he, he uh, was in the know. Uh, was a nervous wreck. Yeah, unorganized. You know, he worked for George's dad when George's dad ran the business. And then he still worked for George when George later ran the business and they kept him around. 
this guy had a big, big mess up, man, a, a big folly, uh, messed up some money, messed up some bread. And by all accounts, man, the only reason he was hired, he was working, is because he was family. This guy was not competent. So remember that, guys, taking this into 2022, do not hire family if they are not competent. Yeah, you're going to be calling a hole. You're going to be called uh, snobbish or bougie or, hey, man, you forgot where you came from, all of that. It's up to you to protect you and things that you are responsible for. It falls on you. And so when the uncle fumbled the bag, it fell on George. Yeah. And Mr. Potter let it know, let it be known it falls on you, George, regardless if it was the uncle's fault. Do not, I repeat, do not hire family if they are not competent. Lesson number five, how to deliver a good toast. Now, it's going to be a lot of toasting around this time. A toast to the men with SD Book, and make sure you pick up their book. Make sure you guys toast to it. It's going to be a lot of toasting. I won't repeat the toast uh, Mary gave uh, George's wife. I won't repeat it. Uh, but it's a hell of a toast. But deeper than the toast, know how to celebrate, man. Know how to celebrate each other. Be grateful. Live in the moment. Uh, strive for more, but live in the moment. Uh, celebrate one another. Uh, let's end this year celebrating one another. Celebrate yourself. You know, you could have gave up. You could have called it quits like George was trying to do, but you didn't. And you, and you won't. And so celebrate yourself. Celebrate your brothers. And we're going to toast to the man. We're going to do that going into 2022 with the bang. Lesson number six, last but not least. Marry the right woman. I repeat, marry the right woman. George married the right woman. And this, the, the movie has hints of romance, but it's deeper than that. It's not the love at first sight romance Hollywood sells us because it was not love at first sight between George and his wife. Actually, she liked him since they were kids. A couple of girls did. And uh, she, she, she liked him, man. She was smitten by him. And he paid her no attention. He rarely, uh, if at all, uh, knew she was there, knew she existed. Uh, but his mom later told him, listen again, his mom, wise woman, not just because she's his mom, but because she happens to be a wise woman through her actions, told him, Mary is the type of one, a type of woman that would help you get the answers. What she was telling him is when you're struggling, when you're confused, when you can't figure it out, when things are complicated and you're stressed out, she's the kind of woman, the kind of helpmate that's going to help you get the answers. Man, that, that is a powerful statement. Think about that. His mom told him Mary is the type of woman that would help him get the answers. Brothers, you got one like that? Hold on to her. And uh, he eventually married Mary, and that was the, the right choice. You know, George had these, these big dreams, and she would just look at him and, and with, with wide eyes, and, and with admiration and respect and love and listen to him talk about his big dreams. And, but Mary was a simple woman. She wanted this old house and, and uh, it had character and she wanted to fix it up. George wasn't interested in it, complained about it throughout the whole movie, but Mary was fine with it. She was fine and she made it a home. You know, when George was stressed out, Mary was that common voice. She was a good mother. She was a patient mother. Uh, Juju. <laughs> That's a little, 
Anybody, Juju Beans, anybody watch the movie, they'll get it. So check out the movie. But yeah, Mary was uh, the wife George needed. His mom told him that, man. That's very important. You, If you're attached to the wrong woman, you'll be stifled. Uh, you'll be limited. You'll be frustrated. You won't have peace. You know, George didn't realize what he had until it was too late. Clarence, the guardian angel, showed him how it would be if he was never born. Mary was an old maid that never married and grouchy. See, they balance one another out, right? They balance one another out. George was meant for her, she for him. Yeah, so check out that movie. My favorite movie, one of my favorite movies, but definitely my favorite holiday movie. It's a Wonderful Life. Check that out. I don't know if I'm gonna make any more videos the rest of 2021. I might start 2022 with a bang, just wait. Uh, I don't know, uh, but don't be surprised if you see more videos before the year ends or if you don't. I don't know. I'm kind of juggling with that thought. So we'll see. If I don't see you or, or hear from you or you don't hear it from me or see me, hey, have a uh, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Be safe. Celebrate one another. Go get that book, A Toast to the Men. And uh, I love you, as always, from me to you. Love. Peace.